Do you ever wonder what's happening with stem cells? They hold incredible potential, but progress seems to be slower than anticipated. In this episode, we'll visit with renowned stem cell researcher Dr. Koshal to discuss breakthroughs in stem cell research and clinical application. All that and more right here on Immortality Now. Major funding for Immortality Now was provided through an educational grant from EnviroMed Sciences. EnviroMed Sciences offers exclusive NASA and NSF certified technologies that remove more than 99% of indoor air, water, and surface toxicants. Get peace of mind protection for your home, family, and office. To learn more, go to EnviroMedSciences.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Ron Klatz, and we're here at the uh, International Congress on Anti-Aging Mess in Las Vegas. We have uh, uh, over 100 uh, presenters from around the world on the latest technologies that are going to improve the quality and the quantity of your lifespan. Uh, I'm very happy today to have Dr. Koshal, who is an expert in stem cell research, who is one of the presenters at our Congress uh, here in Las Vegas, uh, to tell us about new technologies, things that are in the lab now and that will be available for clinical practice in the next uh, two, three years. And so tell us about the research that you're involved with in stem cells. So our interest in stem cells uh, actually was born out of uh, some interest in, um, in my lab uh, some years ago in trying to understanding the molecular basis of uh, two particular retinal disorders, uh, age-related macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. And it was actually a set of serendipitous observations that we made at that time, uh, some talented postdocs in my lab. Uh, we discovered a set of compounds that, uh, in combination, turned on bone marrow stem cells and released them into the bloodstream. And then they had the opportunity to actually go to any diseased part of the body, but in our instance, to the retina itself. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, part of my segue into stem cell biology. Uh, in addition, we had uh, collaborators when I was at the University of Florida where we worked on injecting exogenous stem cells uh, purified in the lab into uh, mouse eyes with various retinal disorders. That was the genesis of my interest in the field from basic research point of view. Um, but I also the, became very interested in the clinical application of stem cell uh, biology uh, for the treatment of various disorders. Uh, it's obviously um, caught the public's attention. It's in the lay press everywhere. Um, the idea of regenerating and or rejuvenating tissues. And there is great progress in the field of stem cells, but there's also great, words not disappointment, but there's a, a sense that things are not moving as quickly as we had hoped that they would. Yes. This is turning into a more complicated issue than yes. people had imagined. Yes. You know, most of us had thought that it was going to be, we get, grab some stem cells, zap it into an organ, <laughs> right, Eureka, right. you know, it's all solved. It's not quite working out that, that That's quickly exactly or that right. easily, is it? That's right. Why? So that is a great question. In fact, I gave a talk about this yesterday <clears throat> here at this meeting. Um, so here's, the, here's perhaps a, a, a conceptual framework to think about stem cells in general, not just for the eye or a particular organ. So when we have a disease state, the, the body is, uh, the tissue and the cells are out of equilibrium. They're in uh, disequilibrium, out of balance. Um, there's many different words that can be used. We, we like to say that the, the cells and tissues are not in homeostatic balance. So when that occurs, the cell has a set of um, processes pathways it stimulates. And we know most of those, or I should say not most of them, we have a fairly decent understanding of most of them. And some of those we know are involved in every chronic disease. And what are those critical pathways? The inflammatory pathway, the oxidative stress pathway, uh, and the immune system being out of uh, equilibrium. Those result in cells and tissues that are already fundamentally uh, out of equilibrium. And if you introduce stem cells into what we'd call a war zone of an inflammatory mix, uh, oxidatively stressed tissue, um, tissue macrophages, microglial cells are also present, then the chance of those cells surviving is very, very limited. And so you're absolutely right. Uh, when we, some years ago, when the idea of uh, the, the tantalizing idea of introducing stem cells into a tissue became 
clinically or technically feasible, we thought, okay, we'll just uh, inject stem cells and that'll solve the problem. But what we're appreciating is that we have to embrace the complexity of the biological processes that are occurring in that tissue or organ. And by understanding that and treating that, almost pre-treating it, then you have the chance for the stem cell or even other therapeutics, for example, to really have a chance to reset equilibrium in the cell or tissue. Okay. Now, there are those who believe that it's not really even the stem cell, that the stem cell, it's really the cytokines, it's the, it's the, uh, uh, the cell signaling factors that are released from yes. the stem cells that lead to the repair of the tissue, that the tissue will basically respond to, uh, to the orders that it's given. Is that what you're finding? Yes. So uh, I was shaking my head uh, as you were saying that because the, I think that's, you've hit the crux of the problem. Is uh, And these are cytokines we're talking about. Yes, cytokines and other trophic factors that are produced by cells that are uh, sending out uh, uh, SOS signals. Uh, and saying, uh, you know, look, uh, we, can, we need help, and the stem cells produce those factors that can mediate that help. Mm -hmm. Now, so I, I would conceptually perhaps even go a little further, Ron. Uh, the way to perhaps think about this it, it conceptually is that there's two classes of stem cells. There's those that regenerate tissue. Um, that's to say that those stem cells can become the tissues of those cells and organs, Right. Um, that's a, that's a, a wonderful idea. There's some experimental evidence in research animals, experimental animals like mice and rats and so on, that that does work at a very low frequency, right? Uh, in other words, it's, the success rate's very low. Uh, but the other type of stem cell that you're really referring to is what we coined or, or call or consider as um, rejuvenating s stem cells. These are the cells that produce these cytokines, these trophic factors that actually improve the function of the neighboring cells and tissues in which they're embedded. Mm -hmm. And those, there's been tremendous progress uh, in the U.S. worldwide as well. And that, in the near term, has a real chance to succeed. But again, the, the key is, is how do we allow those stem cells to survive and do their thing, as it were. And that's why you have to treat the other components of the disease, the inflammation, oxidative stress, the immune system being dysregulated. It's been said that people don't die of old age. They die of a lack of stem cells and a lack of, re of, the, of the rejuvenation yes. and repair that yes. stem cells create. Yes. So as we grow older all of those cells of our body become senescent. Yes. And even the stem cells in our body become Correct. less yeah. effective. Yes, absolutely. I don't think we actually run out of stem cells, but they're just not doing their job. Yes. What can we do from our own points of view? Is there any nutritional, therapeutic, lifestyle intervention sure. to keep our cells younger, longer, and healthier? Yes, absolutely. We know every cell in the body, including stem cells, endogenous stem cells in our bodies, in which are, we find them in essentially all tissues, uh, not only the bone marrow, but uh, for example, in the eye, there are endogenous stem cells, in the brain, mm -hmm. and, and the heart, and so on. We know all of these cells and tissues uh, and I, I come back to the same point that we had discussed earlier, are affected by inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysregulation. Every chronic disease has those three components as part of the pathogenesis of the disease. So those things, nutraceutical or lifestyle changes that affect inflammation, oxidative stress, and immune dysregulation have a profound effect not only on stem cells in our body, but the functioning uh, of the other cells and tissues in our body. What do you think is the most effective of the stem cells? There are stem cells that come from fat, there are stem cells that come from bone marrow, right. there are stem cells that come from different parts of the brain. Yes. Is there one that seems to be showing itself as the master regulator stem cells? No, not, not in particular, Ron. They're, they're, all of these have unique features um, that clearly in certain disease states are quite effective, right? Mm -hmm. And so it be, it's uh, difficult to say uh, at this moment in time. Maybe there is, as you're uh, suggesting, a potential master stem cell. Um, we know there are, for example, pluripotent stem cells that can become every single tissue in the body, right? 
And then there are others that have a limited range of activities in terms of what they can differentiate into. And then there's even within mesenchymal stem cells, there's various types as well. So it's, it's hard to say. Uh, I, I think one of the messages that I think would be important for the f folks who are viewing this is to recognize that there are many different types of stem cells and that when they read it in the lay press or otherwise, it's important to understand, at least as I was mentioning conceptually, the regenerating or the rejuvenating type. And so it again, it depends. Certainly. Now, how long do you expect to live? What's your expected life expectancy? <laughs> I, I was born with very good genes from my mom and, I and my dad's side. But given the yeah. technology that you're aware of and what's in the laboratory and what's coming down the pike right. and the, uh, the impending uh, biotech singularity, yeah. as we talk about here at the A4M in 2029, right. how long do you think you're going to get to live to? Well, I was, I was hoping at least until stem cells become a viable therapy for everyone. So Wait. perhaps probably into the 80s and 90s, I would imagine. 80s and 90s. I, I think that's, that's a reasonable number for most Americans. And are you doing anything pharmacologically or otherwise? For myself? For yourself that you think is going to help you get there. So... Um, not pharmacologically, definitely nutrition-wise. Mm -hmm. uh, well, my family and I, for example, we've completely revamped our diet over the last three to five okay, years. But you don't have any magic uh, pills no. or magic No, we're, we're developing some. You're working we're, on we're, them. we're working on some nutraceutical combinations based on the work in my lab. I see. Uh, and we think those are very exciting because uh, some of the, the effects of these nutri nutraceuticals have not, not been described in the literature. And we believe that some of the biological, those biological effects are key to maintain the cells functioning for extended periods of time, improving well, we, the health and longevity of the cell. Well, we will certainly be interested in hearing more about those as they come out of the laboratory. Right. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> Thank you so much as well. I'm Dr. Ron Klatz for Immortality Now and the American Academy of Anti-Aging Medicine. Live long and well. Immortality Now is made possible through an educational grant from EnviroMed Sciences, offering exclusive NASA and NSF certified technologies that remove more than 99% of indoor air, water, and surface toxicants. To learn more, go to EnviroMedSciences.com. Additional support was provided by Theta Wellness Centers, specializing in behavioral disorders, addictions, detox programs, Lyme disease, and pain management. For more information, visit ThetaWellnessCenter.com.